And now we would like to welcome filmmaker John Walker <laughs> via a video conference to say a few words. Hello, John. Hello. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very exciting uh, to be uh, be part of this festival. We're really excited that the film's going to open up to um, a very engaged audience. I've uh, attended your festival before, so it's uh, it's great to, uh, great to uh, to be part of it. Um, RT Defenders, uh, you saw part of the uh, the trailer there. Art and Defenders tells the story of, of Inuit uh, who are really tired of being pushed around by government, who didn't understand their, their culture, their heritage, uh, their needs in terms of preservation of environment. And they, they began a political movement uh, in the late 60s and early 70s to gain control of, uh, and have a say in, in their future. It's an incredible epic story. For me, it's an inspirational story for, for uh, the younger generation today, these, these uh, people were in their 20s and they had a vision for their future. Um, within five years, they were negotiating the largest land claim in Western civilization, 1.9 billion square miles of territory. Uh, not only did they want a land claim, but they wanted a new territory uh, called Nunavut uh, under their governance. And uh, they pulled it off. It took them 20 years, but they pulled it off. And we felt, I, I got to know Taga Curley on a previous film, Passage, that I made about the Northwest Passage through John Franklin expedition. Taga Curley was one of the, the, uh, the first um, leaders who had a consciousness of this need of, of a redirection for Inuit. And we became friends. And we felt it was time for this story to be told. Um, as there are land claims going across the country, uh, we need to have this kind of leadership uh, that, is, that is concerned with these kinds of issues. Um, you know, and it, all it took was was a, was a few individuals with a vision, and uh, so it's it's, a, it's an inspiration. I hope it inspires inspires uh, your audiences uh, in Toronto. John, thank you so much for making this film, and we're looking so forward to opening night and having you with us in Toronto for opening night. Um, I just have one question, which I think is kind of fun. When was the? How old were you when you traveled up north for the first time? Well, it's interesting. I was inspired by Inuit culture uh, through art, uh, carvings that landed in our home when I was eight. And so at 16, I had an opportunity to get on a, a boat in Mon my hometown of Montreal with my camera and went up to the high Arctic because uh, I wanted to meet, at that time, we called them Eskimos. And um, so I was inspired. And that's part of what this film, I want to show people the incredible majesty and beauty and of, of a culture, of a people. Uh, you know, it polar bears on the front page of Time magazine, Inuit aren't. So it's time that we, we hear and get to understand and to know what the story is of our North from an Inuit uh, point of view. So I, I've sort of been on that trail for a long time. Thank you. Thanks so much. And we'll look forward to seeing you on November 21st. I look forward to being there. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I worked on my very first film festival. It was the Hot Docs Canadian International Film Festival. And uh, I owe a lot to Chris McDonald and to Hot Docs. Um, I also, uh, including actually uh, an introduction to Mr. Mark Glassman and also to Ms. Shannon Abel, who are both of our programmers this year, and I'm really honored and excited to be working with them. Um, so I'd like to invite Mark, and unfortunately Shannon is ill with the flu. It could be a little bit of turkey, you know, hangover, <laughs> actually. So we'll be working our way through this. Well, thanks, John. And actually, by the way, John also was part of our team at, at Hot Docs. He, he programmed the Canadian selection for a couple of years while Shannon and I were involved with the International. So it's great to see John as a filmmaker again, which he always has been, a terrific filmmaker. Uh, and back here with Planet in Focus. It'll be a wonderful opening night. Uh, this year's Planet in Focus Environmental Film Festival presents a robust offering of films. We have stories of betrayal, defiance, heroism. Salmon, carp, and coyotes. And ghosts. <laughs> but first, we'd like to highlight the work of filmmakers who are with us here today. Back to Nature is directed by Joan Prouse and John Visai. In the age of technology and growth, along with losing touch with the outdoors at a cost of our health and the world around us, artists and activists explore the issue and offer alternatives with Robert Bateman, Ed Bertinsky, and Olivia Chapel. 
In Warner Brothers, The Pure and the Poisoned, Alex and Tyler Mifflin travel to the middle of the Pacific Ocean to, to find the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a massive collection of plastic waste contained by o ocean currents. A shout out to Alex and Tyler who are here today. This film will be screened as part of our festival field trip initiative. Tar is directed by Greg Francis, who's here, and Christy Neville, who is the producer. And it features a breathtaking imagery of Western Canada in the heart of winter. Tar offers a first-hand look at the pristine ecology um, that is at risk by the Northern Gateway Project. In the wake of the 100-mile diet and the public's increasing desire for local and organic food, Crackdown tells the story of Toronto's urban chicken keepers. They're a smart and savvy and rapidly growing bunch of mavericks who just want access to fresh eggs at home for their families and are willing to challenge municipal bylaws to get there. This film is by John Keck. Directed by Daniel Thomas, Reclaimed is a poetic portrait of Toronto artist Matt Durant who uses salvaged and reclaimed materials as a canvas to create beautiful pieces of art. Durant combines an equal sensibility with sustainable practices to produce works of a unique and original vision. And Well Fished is by Corrine Dumphy. We'll also screen as part of our EcoBits short film program. This year's PIF is presenting Fest Forum, a series of four films followed by panel discussions with filmmakers and experts to explore the issues presented in the films. The Fest Forum includes Bitter 70, where directors Bath and George Gage bring us to the story of Tim DeChristopher, a college student who outbid industry giants on land parcels winning 22,000 acres of land worth 1.7 million before the auction was actually halted. The forum will explore various forms of activism, and uh, this session is presented by me to Be Style and Now Magazine. Peter Gilbert's Burning Ice documents the Cape Farewell Expedition, which included 40 renowned artists, including musicians K.T. Tunstall, Feist, and Martha Wainwright, who traveled to the Arctic to experience the effects of climate change. <coughs> the forum will explore climate change and is presented with support by Cape Farewell, The Walrus, and Bullfrog Power. In Carpe Diem, director Charlotte Engel and Scott Dobson profile the indestructible breed of fish, the Asian carp, and the people who love and the people who hate them. Charlotte and Scott are with us today. Thank you for joining us. The forum will open up into a general discussion regarding Canada's waters and will include oceans, rivers, and lakes. The session will be presented by the School of Environmental and Natural Resource Science of Fleming College. In GMOOMG, director Jeremy Seifert launches an investigation into one of the food industry's best kept secrets, genetically modified organisms, GMOs. The forum will focus on the pervasiveness of GMOs in our food chain and discuss how to prevent further contamination. It's presented with the support of Organic Garage, Chipotle, and York University Environmental Studies. We are pleased to have one of our guest speakers for the Fest Forum here with us today. 14-year-old Rachel Parent is the founder of Kids Right to Know, an, N an NGO, a nonprofit organization with focus on environmental awareness campaigns to educate youth about global food safety and ecosystem issues. Please welcome to the stage, Rachel. Hi everyone, it's so great to be here today and honestly I'm so honored to have the opportunity to spread awareness and be here again. So, um, first of all, I just wanted to start off by saying my name is Rachel Parent, I'm 14 years old, and I'm the founder of Kids Right to Know. Kids Right to Know is an organization where it's focused on environmental issues, and right now we're focusing on food safety and agriculture. And within that, we're focusing on GMOs and focusing on getting mandatory GMO labeling, because we do all have the right to know. And 64 other countries around the world already have mandatory GMO labeling. So why not us? We deserve it too. We deserve freedom of choice. So that's what my organization is about right now. And I originally got started by doing a speech at school and I didn't know what I should do it on. So I researched more and more because I did know a little bit about GMOs. And I started to get more and more interested and realized something needs to be done. Someone needs to do something about this. And then I decided, why not me? Why can't I make a difference? So I started the organization, and I've been so blessed to have so many opportunities to spread the awareness like I have. Even now, I'll be going to Australia in December to be speaking, and 
um, even places like Argentina and Ecuador and Amsterdam. So it's just so amazing to see how people are receiving this information. And really, my whole organization is about inspiring youth because we are the future. And we are the ones who are going to be your next world leaders and we'll be the ones who need to take care of this earth. So um, I'm so glad to say that youth are finally starting to wake up and even with me to we, I had the amazing opportunity to speak at We Day where there was 20,000 people, um, kids, who wanted to make a difference and who wanted, you know, who were already going to places like Kenya and building schools and houses for people in need. So um, I just wanted to say thank you and uh, means a lot to me.